Okay, uh, 3.2 is just a follow-up type. So we are asked to find the range of v for this function, x to the power of v in Hilbert space, uh, assuming that it is in Hilbert space and on this interval from 0 to 1. So we know that Hilbert space is basically the set of all square integrable functions. So the condition for a function to be in Hilbert space is that the integral from a to b of that function magnitude squared has to be less than infinity. If we evaluate this fully, this is just the integral from a to b of x to the power of v squared dx, integrating, setting our bounds to 0 and 1, and then x to the power, so x to the v times x to the v, that's just x to the 2v times, whoops, not x, 2v dx. If we want to integrate this, this is just going to give us, so there's two possibilities here. Uh, if you look at this, because remember v is real, just all real numbers, negative and positive, because assume v is real but not necessarily positive. If that's the case, uh, this can equal two different things. Uh, case one, 2v is equal, is, yeah, 2v is equal to negative one. If 2v is equal to negative one, then this is just one over x and the integral of one over x is the natural log of x, in which case our integral becomes the natural log of x, the power evaluated from 0 to 1, in which case uh, this is going to give us 0 minus negative infinity, which is just infinity. Alternatively, if 2v doesn't equal 1 or negative 1, we get, uh, let's see, we get 1 over 2v plus 1 times x to the power of 2v plus 1 uh, going from 0 to 1. In which case this is going to equal 1 over 2v plus 1 going from 1 to the power of 2v plus 1 subtracted by 0 to the power of 2v plus 1. In which case, uh, yeah. Uh, and this itself is actually going to give even more uh, possibilities. Because if you look at this, this is equal to 1 over 2v plus 1 at the bottom, but at the top here, this is going to be, this term is just 1, and then subtracted by 0 to the power of 2v plus 1. If, here, and then from this point, if 2v plus 1 is a positive value, this is just 0, in which case we get 1 over 2v plus 1, so this is when 2v plus 1 is greater than 0. If 2v plus 1 is negative, well, 0 to the power of any negative constant is equal to 1 over 0 to the power of that constant, which is equal to 1 over 0, which is infinity. So this is actually going to equal negative infinity if 2v plus 1 is less than 0. So we have three possibilities. 2v is greater than negative 1, in which case our integral equals 1 over 2v plus 1. 2v is less than negative 1, in which case we get negative infinity, and then 2v equals negative 1, in which case we get positive infinity. So therefore, our required range is then that v has to just be greater than negative 1 half. As long as this is true, then our function or our integral is finite, therefore this function will be in Hilbert space. Okay, part B, we're asked, okay, we have the specific case where v is equal to 1 half. So f of x is equal, you know, I want to write this back in black again. Uh, f of x is equal to x to the power of 1 half. Now we're asked, is f of x in Hilbert space, is x f of x in Hilbert space, and is d by dx of f of x in Hilbert space? Immediately from part A, because of the fact that v is greater than negative 1 half, because remember that is our condition for this function to be in Hilbert space, we automatically know f of x is Hilbert space, is in Hilbert. Uh, and, you know, I'm just going to use shorthand. This is how we denote Hilbert space. Uh, it's just a fancy looking h. Next, uh, let's do x f of x. So x f of x is going to equal x to the power of 3 halves. That obviously is just the same concept. v is now equal to 3 halves, which is greater than negative 1 half. So x f of x is in Hilbert space. Finally, we want the derivative of f of x. So 
d by dx of f of x is going to equal 1 half times x to the power of negative 1 half. Now, in this case, uh, v, so if in this case, this is effectively the same thing as just x to the negative 1 half. Because think about it this way. Let's say you have a function, you know, g of x is equal to, you know, x to the negative 1 half. If I take the integral from, you know, my region from a to b of g of x dx and compare it to if I had, say, the integral from a to b of some constant c times g of x dx, well, if the magnitude squared of this thing is constant, then the magnitude squared of this thing is also going to be constant because all I'm doing is I'm going to take this constant c and just move it outside of the integral. So because of that, you know, this this term after I move the constant outside is still the exact same. So if this is finite and c is finite, then this thing is also finite. So what I'm really looking at is not one half x to the power of negative one half, but really x to the power of negative one half. And in that case, v is equal to negative one half. And remember, our condition is it has to be greater than negative one half. It can't be equal. So because of that, d by dx of f of x is not in Hilbert space. And with that, we are done with the second problem of chapter three.